Welcome to another episode of Mama's Family Circle Kids Incorporated, featuring me, Mama Sheba, where all your all my metaphysical cocoons who want to fly as butterflies. I talk about everything your parents won't and talk about on the metaphysical plane. Mama, 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 mama Sheba's house is a safe place. Hello everyone, and today's episode on Mama Sheba's house is to the parents. This episode is specifically made for the parents of my little strange, resilient, metaphysical butterflies, okay? To raise a child in a third dimensional mind, to raise a child that really resists this type of living, this type of programming, to raise a child that thinks different, feels different, do different, and is different from most of the children out here says a lot. And it says that you will not be able, I repeat, you will not be able to raise your metaphysical child like a regular ego-filled child who's all about the, the third dimensional things, money, food, cars, being taken care of, watching over. These earthly children are not asking the why. These earthly children are not asking who. These earthly children are not asking what if. The earthly children don't care. So. Earthly children, I really can't tell you how to raise an earthly child because I don't have an earthly child. My bloodline is not from earthly children. My bloodline is descended from metaphysical kids who ask questions, who don't think like other kids, who feel more like other kids, who are more connected to nature and to people and to feelings more so than other kids, who ask questions, why the presidents do this or why do we feel that and is there other extraterrestrial out there not too many kids have an open mind to ask these weird questions and as a new metaphysical channel here on YouTube I must address as if I'm only talking to the metaphysical kids so if you're not a meta kid then my video is not for you press stop go on to the next video I am specifically feeding the minds of the kids who had questions like me I picked up my okay perfect example I picked up my first demonology book when I was 13 years old and I came from a family of Catholics. I was raised in the Catholic and that's why I call myself an international life coach because I have walked in the life of so many different religions, so many different nationalities, so many different cultures that I am experienced enough, I truly believe, to help anyone with any mental, physical and emotional problem. So I picked up my first demonology book at the age of, I think it was 12 or 13 because I wondered about demons and things of that nature. And these are metaphysical this is a meta kid sign like you you think about spirituality you think about demonology you think about if there's other extraterrestrials in this world you think about outside of this galaxy then you are a metaphysical kid and you are at the right station you have come to the correct youtube channel hi i'm ishara okay today's topic is to my parents of metaphysical kids and the title will be two parents to my parents of metaphysical kids you need to understand that a meta kid understands that this whole world this whole universe was created through a black substance called chaos and a beautiful light called bliss and with black substance called chaos and a beautiful light called bliss they intermingled with each other and created this galaxy which we call the milky way but it doesn't stop at this galaxy because there are multiple arrays of galaxies out here we are not the only one so a meta kid knows this and knows that this procession of life is only one of many possible perspectives your mom in this third dimensional realm i'm talking about third dimensional realm only you guys on this realm you are the mom and dad so your sole purpose as a mom and dad is to 
watch your child as your child grows and gets older. It's not your job to tell that child what to do. It is not your job to criticize that child. It is not your job to get so caught up in your children that you lose yourself. Your main job when it comes to raising these metaphysical kids is being a guiding light to them when they're lost and have a question. You're there or you're there with your opinion. You know, basically a meta physical mother and father does not get too caught up in their children's life because a metaphysical kid is going to run their own life doing their own thing making their own decisions outside of what you may think and feel now it's up to you as a parent to share your perspective it's also um your job as a parent to share the information about your bloodline in the past because a metaphysical kid wants to know about your past they want to know about grandma grandpa everybody because all of the family members in your past play an intricate part in who you are as a person who came out through your mother and your father so know as a parent of a metaphysical kid that they're going to go through problems, they're going to go through stress, they're going to go through dramas. You cannot get yourself too caught up in what your metaphysical child is doing, what your spiritual child is doing. If you have implemented in them during the ages of zero and 10, as much good advice as you can give them or as much example if you can give them from the age 0 to 10 then you should trust that from the age 13 to dead from the age 13 to dead okay 0 to 10 you teach them whatever you can teach them show them whatever you want to show them but from the age 10 to dead when they die you have to understand that your part is a pacific part in your child's life. Your part is to love them, is to show them unconditional love. The main part of coming forth through a parent, sorry, bees are attacking. They always do when I'm sharing the truth with, with you guys. Haters. You have to understand as a parent of a metaphysical child, you cannot get caught up in your metaphysical child situation. You cannot. You're going to have to be ready to just be that listening ear, be that good advice, be that person they can love and trust and go to when they fuck up because they will fuck up. And as a metaphysical parent, you trust that your child will make the right decision. As a metaphysical, oh, I hit him, I hit him, I hit the beat, I hit the beat. It's a big bumble for me and I felt my book hit him. I'm paying. I'm playing B Bing Bong. B Ping Pong. B Ping Pong. I don't think it's coming back. As a metaphysical parent, you have to trust within yourself and you yourself as a metaphysical parent have to keep a mental balance of internal balance key, which is you know you're at balance if you're happy, peaceful, at rest, not stressed. And if you as a metaphysical parent can maintain this secret society knowledge, which is keeping your internal balance will keep your child's internal balance, then you're one step closer to being completely happy during your lifetime. Basically, again, I will say it again, metaphysical parents do not get caught up in your children's bullshit. Your children you can do but so much for your children. You can teach them the way, you can give them advice. But when it comes down to it, that last decision to choose what they want to choose is theirs because you have lived your life. And some parents unfortunately live their lives through their children, which inadvertently causes drama within the household. But it's not your fault, parents. It's not your fault. I blame it all on the people who have set this up, who have set up this system to fail, which is the government. The government knows that you learn what you learn through your parents. So they program your parents before you're even born to set them up to give you the thought of low level frequency vibrations of sadness and your parent is kind of subconsciously forced to teach you in the love of low vibration and unfeeling and hatred and anger and it's really sad that the government has this great hold around the universe of what we call here earth 
but I believe we're going to come out of it really, really soon. But till then, I'm trying to help you Medicaid. Medicaid, please. Most of warning Medicaid. Warning Medicaid. Warning Medicaid. Most of the parents out there are religious, egotistical, lost and confused, scared beings and hurt beings of this world. So your your mom and dad is most likely hurt and that's why there's fighting that's why there's issues that's why you can't ask questions about sex that's why you can't talk to them about these desires that you want to try that you're supposed to try because all metaphysical all metaphysical kids know that getting hurt and feeling hurt is a way of life and that's how you get better by feeling the hurt because either you're going to choose to live better or you're going to choose to do the same mistakes it's your life so know that your parents are hurt and they're coming from a hurt place and that's why they're always so aggravating and that's why they're always so annoying and that's why they're always so full of drama and that's why they're not listening to you and that's why they're stuck in religion and that's why they're stuck at the job that's how come you don't see your parents because they too busy chasing a check they too busy chasing love they too busy chasing the next orgasm they too busy ch um, chasing the next get off instead of focusing on if they were metaphysical parents, the most important thing, which is the most important thing to me, is trying to reach a higher, a higher mental plane of thinking for yourself. When you make yourself the number one focus and pull yourself, I should say, I use the word disengage yourself from certain emotional situations. Look out for that next video, disengagement, the art of disengagement. You will seriously be happier. You will seriously be more at ease. You will seriously be more, your life will be more thrilling. Do not allow yourself to continue this, this repetitive pattern of being programmed by the TV, by your old, by your parents' way of thinking. I know I think nothing like my mother. Only a little bit. I get my herbal side from my mother, and she doesn't even know it, I don't think. I don't even think my mom even notices that I, I get my very, my root woman, my healing woman from my mother. And only, my mother would only show her herbal side when we got sick or if she was trying to give us herbs to give us um to keep us healthy but she was too busy chasing the dollar but there would be there was these beautiful moments where my mom taught me that my earth has everything i need to heal myself she didn't teach me that but she taught me that herbs are important and with i took that and i ran with it so know that again metaphysical kids are only the creation of sperm and egg that a, that you and a husband or you and a wife created and if you stress yourself out about this child this metaphysical child you're going to give yourself a heart attack so don't stress about your metaphysical child also understand that we are all one. We are all connected. So know that the best way to deal with things is to be nice about it, no matter how right you are. I don't care how right you are. I don't care how validated your point is. I don't care how much the situation completely rears to your side of things. Because the fact that we are one, whatever wrong that has been done to you you should take it with a light chin like the bible says a cheek for a cheek a nose for a nose turn the right cheek there yes there is a time to fight but there's also a time to keep one with yourself and not allow the stresses of life to affect you to bother you to stress you out to the point where you're yelling at your child perfect example i'm going to share perfect example I went to the beach yesterday with, actually, I went to the beach Sunday with my son and my BFF and her four kids. And we said we were going to meet at 10. Long story short, 
after I get the ice for the trip, after I get both my son and his playmate cousin who was sleeping over that weekend ready to go to the beach and everything, she texts me, um, I'm sorry, but um, I can't, I don't want to go no more to the beach because I forgot I have a barbecue to go to. Long story short, I was upset. I was like, you plant this with me and then all of a sudden you changed your mind? Long story short, it doesn't matter how the ending happened. What I made sure I didn't allow to do... Oh, first I have to tell you my fuck up. My fuck up was after she sent me that message, I was feeling some type of way. The type of way I was feeling was anger. And my son my, my, my son says, Mommy, who was that? I was like, nothing. It, it, it was Tati. It was Tati Tasha. And she says she doesn't want to go to the beach no more. And he goes, well, is her son going or uh, is Josiah still going and I yelled at him and I was like I don't even know if he's going why are you talking to me like that I, I don't even know if they going why don't you make sure that you going like I literally flipped it on my son and started yelling at my son and I knew why I was yelling at my son because my homegirl was getting me upset she got me upset about the fact that she says she doesn't want to go anymore and I caught myself allowing my anger to ricochet my anger onto my son and that is so not right and we do that a lot in life we do it at the workplace we do it at home when we bring the drama from outside into the house or if we bring the drama from in the house to outside you have to learn as an enlightened one that we are all connected and if someone's throwing you hate it's because they're hurting you saw the b the b agreed with me it just hit my screen if someone throws you hate it's because they're hurting and you if you choose to be the higher thinker the higher feeler which most people don't and that's what makes me a little bit cut above the rest because I don't allow the small things to get me upset I don't allow the criticisms to rub me the wrong way I don't allow my girlfriend who all of a sudden changed her mind after we planned to go to this beach trip to go with her and then she changed her mind and says no it, it, it's not going to affect me. Long story short, I ended up going to the beach and I ended up going with my friend. Um, but I was going to be happy to go to the beach without her. I was at that point where if it wasn't meant for me to go with her, then it wasn't meant for me to go. There's no reason for me to be upset. This, that's another thing. Can I give you a secret society rule number two? Secret society rule num number two. When things don't go your way, as a metaphysical kid, that bee is back. He wants to get hit again. Let's go. As a metaphysical kid, like, you know, anything that you don't get, it wasn't meant for you to get. And if it wasn't meant for you to get, what you're supposed to get is going to come back to you soon enough. So don't stress about it. We as egotistical beings, spiritual beings, having this fleshly human experience, get so caught up in trying to follow the goals they want or trying to get the things they want perfect example i was so in love with my lawyer come to find out he has a woman i can't cry about it i can't even though i think we would be perfect together the man says he has a woman and i'm not the type of person to like really step on the toes of any relationship no matter how whack the relationship is so i stepped back from that you have to understand when things don't happen your way, when things don't happen your way, relax and know in comfort that everything happens for a reason and something better is coming your way. Something greater is coming your way. Something that is so perfect for you that you're not going to fight to get it. It's going to automatically come. And I was going too hard for my lawyer. But when he said he had a girl, I was done. I, I, I gave that up. Like, don't push yourself on anyone who doesn't want the love or who doesn't think they're worthy of the love. Usually, if someone doesn't want the advances of a good woman or male, it's usually because they have a safe hatred or a self-fear or a self-confusion within self, which causes them to not compute what the other person sees, which is... A prospective great couple oh well <laughs> on to bigger and better things so I can give you some great information as a metaphysical parent dealing with a metaphysical kid what you should do to ease the next couple of years of living life with your metaphysical kid 
Because I'll tell you now, it's going to be a topsy-turvy ride because they want to explore. They want to try new things. They want to feel new things. So they're going to do this. But if they have the parent that is going to be there for them no matter what and give them the advice that this parent can give them, then all you have to do as a metaphysical parent is breathe when you get stressed out, breathe, pray or meditate and know that it's going to work itself out. So know that there's good and evil, know that there's light and dark. And good and evil is more so of a feeling than an actual action. Good and evil is more so of a feeling than an action. I feel as a metaphysical parent that if I'm not hurting anybody, I say go ahead and give it a try. If it's not hurting anybody and you feel like doing it, then go ahead, do it. Do it. Okay. Also know that where there's love, there's hate. And with everything in life, there's a little bit of both in it to create something. When you were born, as a metaphysical parent, a meta kid feels this way. If you were, I was born through my parents, mother and father. And both had a little good and a little bad. And when they mixed the little good and the little bad, the DNA strand created me. So we can't be living in a world where a religion or a church says you have to look away from all the bad no then we wouldn't be spiritual beings having a human experience we would be spiritual beings like the other spiritual beings that we deal with on other metaphysical levels we are spiritual beings having a human experience so in order to know what good is to them they have to experience bad to some degree to comprehend what their limits and their expectations are to what they want to do in life. Your child cannot be all that they can be. They cannot become the best person they can become unless they fuck up a few times. And they need their parents to respond to them in a metaphysical way of, I know you're going to fuck up, but you need to think about what you're doing because this, this, and this is a more better you can give them your ideas on what you think is right but you cannot penalize them for choosing their own life that's key for any metaphysical family that's key to like any metaphysical family or any spiritual family so long story short my parents I have to tell you that raising a child a spiritual um, being who's having a human experience the best way you can go about raising this child is, I know this, this, this sentence is overrated, but people say it, but they don't understand the whole concept of the definition and the meaning of it. But it's unconditionally loving your child. That's what a meta parent does for their metaphysical kid is unconditionally loving their child through the fuck ups, through the mistakes, through the D's in school through the not listening perfect situation my son is is not the greatest in school he tries um he's in a special education school they complain to me and again i take education with a thin grain of salt because they're teaching my son nothing i want him to learn except the basics which is numbers and letters the main thing i send my son to a public school is to learn the basics numbers and letters because i feel that's the only thing they can teach him they could also teach him to work a job they can also teach him to continue to be a slave in this business world they could teach him to be a slave in this world of economics so i really don't t i take what they say to me about my son with a grain of salt my main concern with school is is he paying attention is he trying to pay attention is he listening to his teacher and is he trying his best to focus and follow direction that's it and I noticed that there's a repeat every time I go visit my, my son's teachers and it's the same thing. Audrin is hard to focus. He can't focus. He needs drugs. He can't focus. He needs drugs. And I have to tell these people over and over and over again, hell no, you are not medicating my child. 
Do you know they get a check for every child they put on medication at the public school system? Do you know they get a check for every child they put on drugs? They tell our babies, no, don't do drugs. But right now the agenda of the government is to promote a whole bunch of drug prescription in the school when your kid don't want to sit down, when your kid don't, can't pay attention, when your kid can't focus. It's called being a kid. You need to get your kids into activities to burn off this extra um, this extra energy. These kids that are coming out right now are not like the, the, the kids from years back, are not like the kids from my day. Like they they are very smart. And if you're slapping them in front of a TV set, you are eating away at that child's mind. I'd rather you take your kid out every day to play for six hours than allow your son to watch TV or your, 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 your daughter to watch TV and play video games for the whole day. You know what I'm saying? You need to understand they are programming you and your children to stay zombies and, and to, to become workers of this economic company and not focus on the important thing, which is heart, soul, power, love, growth, coming together as one nation, working together. Haitian, Jamaican, Israelite, Islamic, all the same thing, all the same thing. We're one and the same. And as, as you continue to follow the propaganda of separation, flag day, Haitian, Jamaican, white, black, you're gonna continue, we're gonna be continued lost as a people. As a people, we will be continued lost. So as a parent of metaphysical kids, please don't burden yourself with the mistakes. They're kids, they're gonna fuck up. Just be there for them. And you as a parent, continue giving them good advice. Don't ever, ever get tired of giving your children good advice. Because the day you get tired of giving your, your children good advice is the day your job stops as a parent and you are just not even, you're not even feeding your legacy. You're not even trying to make yourself better. Because when you stop teaching your kids, when you get annoyed with your kids, that's when then you're losing your internal blessing of life when you stop trying to teach your kids because they can't follow or they won't follow the same instructions or the same exact instructions that they're giving you to follow. It's not up to you to make sure your kids follow your directions. It's only up to you to share your knowledge to your kids about that. Let them figure out if they want to follow it or not. Trust me, if you're a good parent like me, every time my son don't listen to me, something bad happens to him. And I kid you not. And I truly believe it's because I'm a metaphysical parent and I don't let nobody stress me out. Not even my kid. I notice every time Audrin does not listen to me, the universe shows him, mommy was right. You should have listened to mommy. And then I remind him every time. I'm like, babe, you just got hit. You see, you didn't listen. Babe, see, you didn't listen to mommy. You got hurt. And then he gets mad and cries even more. But it's the truth. It's the truth. <laughs> I remember once I told him, stop riding the scooter in the house. And he was riding the scooter in the house. I said, stop riding the scooter in the house. And I said, as soon as I said, stop riding the scooter in the house, boom, he fell on the floor and hurt him. He, he hit the, he hit a wall or something. And he was like, ah, ah, ah. and I said, see, baby, I told you to stop. You didn't listen. And then he goes, ah, because he knew he was wrong. Like he didn't listen. So don't stress yourself out about your kids not listening because the ancestors because a metaphysical um kid knows that when mommy's not watching metaphysical kid knows when mommy's not watching best believe mommy's ancestors got your back perfect example my son came running up the steps crying mommy mommy this man scared me it was a friend of it, we were going to the beach it was a friend uh it was a male friend of my girlfriend's and he was playing with her son and my son is very emotional he got scared and he started to cry and i looked at my son and i said baby why are you crying why are you crying 
When mommy's not looking, don't worry, the ancestors got you. Ancestor grandma, ancestor grandpa, ancestor uncle, aunt, uncle, trust me, plenty you don't, you've never even met before protecting you. No worries. And plus, you know, mommy will kill for you. Hell yeah, I said that shit. I said, yeah, your mommy will kill. For, I will kill for my son. Look into my eyes and understand when I say I will kill for my son. And I told my son to look in my eyes and know this and never be afraid of nothing. Never be afraid of nothing because your mommy will kill and protect for you. Never. So just know that. And then he was good. He was fine. He stopped crying. He went to play. He did his thing. It was all good. So know that un unconditional. Okay, the B hitting it the second time is telling me it's time to stop. So I'm going to stop. Okay. My final say on metaphysical parents raising metaphysical kids. Know that ancestors will watch over your kids when you're not watching them know that the only thing you can do is feed your child the information feed them the information feed them and you feed them through your stories of past number number three don't hold back the stories of the past share your stories with your children because your children should have something to take with them after you die and when they get older and make their own families and move and migrate to different places. The only way your legacy is going to continue to live on is by you sharing it. So share your truth with your children. You know, and I feel again as a metaphysical mom, don't stress yourself out about it guys. Because... Metaphysical parents know that everything will work itself out. Don't stress because all you're doing is piling on more negativity. Try not to talk with your kids when you're arg when you're when you're mad. Like you know you're mad at your kids. I don't care if it takes four days for you to release that anger. You cannot have a conversation about what your kid did wrong in a state of anger. You have to release that anger before you can talk to your kid about it because all your kid is going to feel is the anger and they're not going to hear the beautiful nuggets of wisdom that I bet you have to share for them. So please don't talk to your kids when you're upset. Don't talk to your kids when you're high. Don't talk to your kids when you're confused. Don't try to parent your kids when you're dead tired. Don't try to parent your kids when you're, when you're lost like seriously get your mind right before dealing with your kids because within getting your mind right you can have a better conversation write down the things you want to say to your kids so when you do have the conversation with them you remember to hit all the points that you wanted to hit with your kid not all of us can be like tv moms and walk into the room and talk to your kid about what wrong they did you can't do it when you're in a state of anger. You have to calm down no matter how long it takes. And you have to approach the conversation like it's a CEO meeting. And you have to g give your kids the best information possible to help them grow. Yelling at them is not going to help. Um, uh, 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 punishing them like beating them. I realized through, I realized through research that beating didn't help my situation i tried the beating thing with my son but what i noticed with beating all it did is made audrin angry it got him upset and he would shut down and i knew because i'm a metaphysical mom that he wasn't listening to me also i do connective exercises with with my child i feel it's important that we stay connected to our to our children every day i literally make my son give me a hug like yo give me some love like seriously give, give me some love like i need a hug sometimes i tell my son when i'm down and out and i'm stressed baby i need a hug like mommy had a bad day today i need a fucking hug like seriously seriously and my my nine-year-old son gives me a hug he'd be like he knows me he knows my my motion he knows like if i'm feeling down i need a hug because it's a true fact a hug from your child can release a lot of negative energy it's like an energy dis um um a disbursement, an energy disbursement. When you're angry and you hug your, your child, it like 
it gives you like a, a bountiful a feeling of love and it really eases the heart it really does so i believe in hug hugging the family and being together with the family and yes me and my son have movie time and things of that nature we have to spend time with our family to know who they are and get used to it by practicing to spend time with your family you practice to spend time with friends at school then you practice to spend time at with people at your job then you practice to spend time with people in your career then you practice to spend time with people in your business and then you're capable of running a nation if you do it right you learn to master your family all the bullshitters all the liars all the haters all the agitators you learn to live cohesively in your family these are the key components that will teach you to run a nation and build a co-op and have our own. It's not about having our own businesses. It's about working together and coming together as a people and building co-ops to where we don't need the the dangerous supermarket food where we don't need the jobs that don't pay us nothing where we don't need to outlaw the only freaking drug that can help cancer patients like the only reason the government d out doesn't doesn't um give the law for weed is because they can't tax it they cannot tax weed and because the government can't make money off of it it's illegal don't worry if your metaphysical kid is smoking weed it's either gonna make them a little bit smarter or make them dumber but again it's their choice you can't stress yourself out about what your kids are doing so know this and all will be well this video is a little bit longer than most of my kid videos because this is specifically for the parents of meta physical kids specifically for the parents of metaphysical kids unconditionally love your kids speaking of kid I have to go and pick up mine seriously I have to go pick up mine so I want to say thanks for watching this episode I hope you learned something and if you want to share it please feel free to share it with someone else or maybe even a kid that would actually be helped by this information and remember mama's family circle kids is a metaphysical channel for the universal law babies of the metaphysical state of mind thanks for listening thanks for watching see you next time